right now in this tutorial, what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can use Motion Master to create a prism or rainbow effect. Now we're not going to be really creating a motion blur here, but we're going to be creating a prism effect. So if you ever wanted to create a prism or a rainbow, I'm going to show you how you can do that by using the Motion Master plugin. And with the Motion Master plugin, you can do so much more than just motion blur. So the whole purpose of this tutorial is to help you to start thinking outside the box. Now in this particular case here, this is something you won't find in the documentation. This is something that I discovered on my own through experimentation. So there's a lot of hidden features found within the Motion Master plugin and some other interesting things you can do. You can create curved irregular motion blur paths. You can create volumetric lighting. You can create particle effects, explosion kind of effects. You can do a whole lot of different things. But right now, I'm going to give you one example. And we are really looking forward to seeing some of your renders and seeing some of the interesting ways you make use of Motion Master. So do post your images up in the 3D forums. If you're a member of the Dreamlight Club, post your images there. We're always interested to see the different kind of creative things you can do with Motion Master. But we're going to start off here right now by creating a new primitive and I'm going to create a sphere in order to create this rainbow effect just to show you how you would go about doing this. So I've created my sphere and the next thing I want to do, and this is a sphere 100 centimeters in size. It's important to remember that for a reason. And I'm going to create a point light and I'm going to parent that point light to the sphere. And now in my parameters window, and I'm running at a low screen resolution so a lot of my windows are off screen. But what I'm going to do is with the point light selected, I'm going to put that into the center of the sphere by making it 50 in the Y translate. And that'll put the point light right in the center of the sphere. And that's why I did mention the sphere was 100 centimeters. 50 will put the point light right in the center there. And then from here, I'm going to go to my surfaces tab. I'm going to select on the sphere. And I'm going to make this a semi-transparent object. So let me see if I can expand this down a little bit. And I'm going to come down here. Here's opacity. I'm going to set this opacity to 50%. We're almost done setting up. I'm going to have the point light selected here. What I want to do, I'm down to the point light. I'm going to turn the intensity all the way up 200%. And I'm going to turn it red. And when we render this, this is what we have. And I can even make this a more intense light here by stacking up another point light here. But I'm not going to do that but just to make you aware that you can do that. And what I'm going to do now is first, I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit and get things into position. We're going to go into Motion Master and I'm going to choose Set Motion End. I'm going to select the sphere. I'm going to hit Accept here. Click OK. Set the start point. Actually, I want to close that up. Whoops. Control Z. Make sure the sphere is selected. Move the sphere back here. And I want to position this in a way that we can really see this motion trail. So right set motion start. Now I can view the start and the end. Start. Whoops. I gotta do this over again. Set motion start. There's the end. There's the start. Now I'm gonna leave these settings as they are. This is set all the way up to fine. Blur sharpness is down to 0% and then the blend fade is on 25%. Now down here, there's going to be some information that I need where it says it's ready to render 134 images. Okay, so I'm going to use that information to set my timeline to a total of 134 frames. All right, and I'm going to set the range to 134. And now I have a timeline here set to 134 frames. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to animate that point light now. So back here in my scene tab, I'm going to select that point light. I'm going to create a keyframe here on the first frame. We're going to get to about the halfway point here. Go right about there maybe. Now I'm going to set this color to green at this point. And then I'm going to go to the very last frame. I'm going to create another keyframe and then we're going to set this to blue. So throughout the timeline, this is going to go through all the colors of the color spectrum. Now at this point, we're ready to create our motion effect. 
I'm going to undock my motion blur, motion master panel here. And I'm simply going to click render motion here. And this will go through and render everything. All right, now as this is rendering, I'm going to pause the video. Now we're done rendering our layers. And rather than opening up my 2D photo editing application to save time, we're going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to take a shortcut here. And I'm going to go to edit. And I'm going to choose backdrop. And I'm just going to load up our motion image into the background here. This was in test. And I believe it would be this. Except here. And there we have it. That's our prism effect showing up. Let me do a quick render here so you can get a better view of that. So there we have it. That's our prism effect. And notice how we started off red and it's just a rainbow effect. Now, this was, again, cheating. If we were to take this and composite this in our 2D photo editing application, we can make things look a lot nicer. But in any case, you now know how to create this kind of prism effect with Motion Master. So that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out some more video tutorials, do come visit us at the Dream Light Club at the Dream Lounge. And with that, I'm just going to end this tutorial.